This week we're talking about magnets and reed switches, and this will work on any railroad, I mean any railroad, even uh, battery-operated dead rail railroads. Uh, so they're, they're universal. However, we have been talking about the LGB1015 uh, diode bridge system, and so we're gonna show how that works using this reed switch control system and then uh, we'll be just using that as a jumping off point to demonstrate how you can actually use this on any railroad. So let's uh, quickly review what we were talking about last week using the 1015 diode bridge system from LGB. This is my old garden railroad and it consisted of two loops, an east and a west loop, each controlled by a 1015K diode bridge. So here's a page out of LGB's user guide from the 1990s and we can see that there are two loops here and each one has a 1015K diode bridge controlling the direction of the trains inside that loop. So uh, because of the orientation of the two diode bridges, the trains will always travel around this loop in this direction irrespective of how the direction switch is set on the power supply, and they will always travel around this loop in this direction, again, irrespective of the direction switch on the power supply. And that means that the direction switch on the power supply only controls the direction of the trains in this center section here. So in order to continuously operate trains around the railroad, all I had to do was throw the direction switch as soon as uh, the train was completely inside one or the other loop. That would change the direction of the train as it went through the center section so they would just go around forever. So we are finally caught up uh, to this week, read switches and magnets for automation. So in order to completely automate my railroad, I had to find some way to change the direction of the center section here automatically so that I didn't have to throw the direction switch every time a train was completely in a loop. And LGB offered a system for automating this. Again, this is a page out of the LGB user guide from the 1990s. And this is the system that they used to offer. This is the heart of the system. It's a double pull, double throw relay, which is actually built out of one of their switch machines, the LGB12010 switch machine. This is the switch machine they offer to convert any of their switches to electric uh, operation. In this case, they've combined it with the LGB12030 electrical contacts which simply connect to the end of the switch machine and convert that into a double pull double throw relay. So if you connect this relay to your main line, either the direction switch on the power supply or this relay will change the direction of the trains anywhere on the, the rest of the railroad, anything other than the reversing loops. So we're going to automate this double pole, double throw switch that controls the direction of the trains on the main line by using reed switches and magnets. Again, while this is an LGB system, I'm going to show you how you can build your own version of this and use it on any railroad. Now LGB used to offer a reed switch, 17100 reed switch. It's not offered by LGB anymore but it is being uh, remanufactured by another company. Now the reed switches operate the uh, relay that's made out of the switch machine here. And they're placed at these two positions in the two reversing loops. So when a train is traveling around the left loop here, as soon as it gets to this location, a magnet mounted underneath the locomotive will trip this reed switch which will fire the relay over here and change the direction of the main line to match the current direction of the locomotive. That way the train would continue on past the 1015K and just keep right on going down the main line toward the other loop. 
Once the trains were in the other loop, the same thing would happen. As soon as they arrived here at the reed switch, that would fire the relay, changing the direction of the main line in the other direction, and we would just keep right on going. So this is how the LGB system worked for continuous operation of a loop-to-loop -loop dog bone railroad. So let's take a closer look at these individual components. Uh, this is the LGB reed switch. Again, it's no longer made by LGB. Another German company has picked up a remanufacture of it, but you could substitute just any reed switch here. And where the LGB uh, switch machine is still made, the little add-on component that turns it into a double pole, double throw relay is no longer offered. But the upside is any double pole, double throw latching relay can work here. You just substitute something else. Now let's keep in mind that nothing we're talking about here is controlling the position of the points at the two turnouts. Uh, what I did on my railroad, and I think the simplest way to handle this is as the trains always go through the loop in the same direction, to just use a spring switch here. This way the trains will always be directed uh, in the proper direction going into the loop and then as they come back around the other way the spring allows the points to move out of the way and the train to continue on through the switch. It's pretty easy to convert most switches into uh, a spring switch. You simply attach some sort of spring to the throw bar so that the points are always heading in the same direction, but they can easily move out of the way. Should you want to use a switch machine here, you can. You would simply hook the powered switch machine up to the reed switch uh, in parallel with the relay so that both the relay and the switch machine are triggered by the locomotive uh, passing over the reed switch. Here's another illustration from the LGB manual, and you can see this is, this is very similar to what I had in my yard, but the single track main line can be any length uh, connected to the two loops at either end, but the entire center section is going to be controlled by the relay. Now in the LGB manual, it also shows how this exact same system can be used on a, a single track to simply reverse the direction of the trains at either end, you know, provided they're not going very fast because they're just going to suddenly change direction. We don't want to strip the gearbox. But you can see here how the exact same system would work for doing, let's say, a trolley up and down a single track where you just want to reverse the direction at either end. In this case, there's no isolation of the track at all. It's just a single track connected to the relay. And as the trolley or locomotive reaches the reed switch, it reverses direction and the thing takes off and goes in the opposite direction. And it'll just sit there going back and forth forever. Now, as I mentioned earlier, after LGB's uh, bankruptcy reorganization, they no longer offer the little part here that hooks to the switch machine to turn it into a double pull, double throw relay. Moreover, back when they did offer it, the darn thing cost 60 bucks. It's like $40 for the switch machine and $20 for the little add-on part that turns it into a relay. Now, I also mentioned that the reed switch from LGB is no longer offered. But this one has been remanufactured. DGK is offering the same uh, reed switch, but it's 35 bucks. And it's intended to be used on LGB's garden track. So if we want to use it on some other track systems, even some other gauge or scale, or we just want to save some money, let's go looking for the exact same components that are offered from other people. Now, in terms of the relay, uh, Atlas, the source of all things HO going back to the 1960s, offers the same thing. It's a switch machine that's been converted into a double pull, double throw relay. And as you can see, it's only 20 bucks. All of the electrical connections are exactly the same as the LGB equivalent. 
you've got three terminals at this end that cause the switch machine to go left and right, or in this case, I should say the relay to go to one set of poles or the other set of poles. And then you've got the six connections at this end for your double pole, double throw switch. So we would wire this the same way we would wire any double pole, double throw switch that we're going to use for reversing the track direction. That is to say, we set up crisscrossing wires between the two output poles of the switch. And then we connect the two input terminals to our power supply. And then we connect our track to either of the two output terminals. And now the direction on that section of track is being controlled by this relay. And you still have control of the direction from the direction switch on the power supply. The connection here on the Atlas relay is exactly the same as if it were uh, an Atlas switch machine, because basically it is an Atlas switch machine. So you connect one side of a DC power supply to the center terminal here, and then by momentarily making contact to either of the other two terminals with the other side of the DC power supply, will trigger the relay and reverse the direction of the main line. And you can use this Atlas relay on any railroad, any scale, any gauge, even uh, an outdoor LGB railroad should you want to. Or you could use uh, any latching relay. Here's one on Amazon. It's a dollar more than the Atlas, but it does the exact same thing and it would hook up in the exact same way. Now it uses a four wire system to activate the relay, but um, you can see from the diagram here, it's be very, very simple to hook up and operate even from uh, a reed switch. In this case, the two reed switches would replace these two momentary contact push buttons here. Now let's look at a few uh, alternatives for the LGB reed switch. As you can see, reed switch and magnets are readily available on Amazon. And check this one out. It's absolutely perfect to use on pretty much any railroad. It will, it's the exact right size to fit down between the rails on an HO railroad, but it could even be placed uh, underneath the rails on an N gauge or N scale railroad. Uh, and they're really, really affordable. LGB offers different magnets that simply snap in place on the bottom of any of their locomotives. Uh, for the rest of us, uh, or if you just want to save some money, uh, the little uh, neodymium magnets here, the rare earth magnets that come with these reed switches, one of those would have to be mounted on the bottom of any locomotive that you want to run through the automatic reversing loop. Uh, in order to trigger the reed switch. And there's no reason that you can't use this for something other than automatic reversing loops. Should you want to use a, a magnetic solution for triggering any device on your railroad, the, the reed switch and magnet system here uh, in conjunction with the relay could be used for triggering any number of different things. Well, I hope all of this makes sense. Uh, <laughs> A, um, I know it's a little bit confusing and bizarre, but uh, if, if you're confused, watch it again. And then if you're still confused, write a nasty comment in the comment section. And speaking of which, please hit the like button. It helps, uh, it helps you find other videos and it helps other videos find you. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe by hitting on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And uh, Karen and I will see you here on Sunday. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.